What is going on guys, DBG here, and in this video we are going to be just playing a game of NBA 2K20, my team, in the No Money Spend squad. So, basically, what I did was I tried to go 12-0. I played a couple of games last night and I played a good few games today, and in the end I got to 9-0. So, I have all those games, well, some of those games recorded, and it's out of... And like just out of frustration, I just completely even reset my um, my rewards, so I don't even get the higher tier rewards. But I don't know. Like I initially recorded this video um, a little bit earlier, and the intro is just absolute. It's just me frustrated, and there's no point in me posting that. But uh, yeah, so pretty much this is what we've gotten. Like this is the team we ran with. I think this is a really good team. Kobe White, RJ Barrett, Nick Young, Luke Walton, and LaFrance. I just, there are a few players that I hope we see tomorrow in the Spotlight Series. So I want you guys in the comment to leave a guess who the Spotlight Series player is going to be. It could honestly be anyone. Like, I don't think many anyone would have predict, predicted Dirk Nowitzki. And Clyde Drexler is another one to pink diamond rewards. So at this rate, we're probably going to get Larry Bird or a not yet another Dr. J. You just don't know. But, um, yeah, so this is the team we had been using. Like, this month we have gone 11 and 1, 11 and 1, and then 9 and 0. Oh. oh, like, we are literally, we are 20 or 31 and 2. We were 31 and 2 with this account during the month of October. Actually, no, sorry, 31 and 3. We lost us at 0 and 0 at one stage. So 31 and three, and plus 90% win rate, which is crazy. And we still, just none of those times could manage to just get those 12 games in a row, which is frustrating. And I'm not even bothered about Amari. I don't even necessarily want Amari. The reason why I'm annoyed is because it would be a great, great title to say I got a free Galaxy Opal. But maybe, to be honest, later on in the year, I probably will get a free Galaxy Open in like March and April when this series is going to be doing better view eyes. So maybe that's a blessing in disguise. But uh, yeah, so definitely leave it in the comments what you guys think the Spotlight Series is going to be. So anyway, we are now going to go over the nine games. Actually, no, we're going to go over like four or five of the games, the only ones that were recorded. Um, and then we're going to get into an actual game with this squad. So this was the single weirdest game of 2K I've ever played. So this guy's team is obviously terrible. But I started off this game in the crazy situation ever. So this guy didn't really green many shots to start the game. And he hit his first three three-pointers. They were all whites. Every single one of them. Then hits a leaning green with Luka Doncic. Then goes in greens from the corner. So I'm like worried at this stage. Then they go and hit another white. Like, this was the maddest thing ever. This guy was just taking leaning jump shots, not even getting close to green, and with low-rated players, and then greening all of his, like, wide-open shots with his other players. This was unreal. But, um, in the end, we started to come back, and then they'd be hitting, like, leaning shots off screens. So this guy here, even with his low-rated team, put up a great, great fight in this game. So give credit where credit's due. We didn't get the lead until the third quarter where Katino Mobley goes and his two three-pointers in quick succession. They go right down a couple of plays later though and hit a big three-pointer on us with uh, Legler, I think. But at this stage, I'm like, I'm 100% sure that I'm gonna win this game and win it comfortably. We managed to build up a nine-point lead, goes back to seven, and we actually hit a full wide three, which doesn't, there's not, a, that's not been a lot for me. And a green there with the elites so every time they started look like they were going to come back in the game we were green in threes we had that little bit of a rhythm from uh, earlier in, on the game and of course what happens they're going to be hitting their whites they're going to be hitting their whites and we can't hit our wide open shots with our players two wide open misses and lafrance just completely missed the ball right there something okay one player to go worst case scenario this is going to overtime and we have a chance at uh, we'll have a chance to win it and it's going ot but a Gatorade symbol, D-Rose, bad release, not a good three-point shooter. Him at a sapphire, nails the three-point shot. So I'm thinking, I cannot lose first game. Well, not first game, I think this was four and up. But I can't lose my first game today. And we actually make a really good play here. We get the switch. And he makes a smart play by fouling. Actually, no. Look at Magdalene, it may not have been a smart play because he could have doubled with Capella. But I would have had a wide open three-point shot then with 
um, Kobe White, which might have been a better option in giving Ray for France the shot, but in the end, we get a one point lead, which is a game we should have just blown this guy out. And then we play a terrible defensive possession. They actually don't release too badly, and we just get lucky. Straight up, we got lucky there. So, game two was against this guy here. This squad is actually not too bad, but Kobe White early in the game carried us. Well, let's be real, like, if you guys watch any of my games, a lot of it is based on three-point shot, and this guy was unlucky not to be ahead by more. Like, I was hitting a lot of white three-pointers, which I shouldn't have really been hitting. If I was him, I would have been really, really annoyed at that, but at least this changed from pretty much this shot right here with Nick Anderson. The whole, whole landscape of this game changed with that one green three. So Nick Anderson, he's the star of this team. Like he is the star. When we're winning, it's cause Nick Anderson shooting well. Like there we go, it's another three point shot on the fast break. They can't give him an inch of space. And then that's his fourth three pointer of the second quarter. Nick Anderson is, car he carried us for a lot of this. The ball goes to Bielitsa, he gives a three point lead at halftime. Hey look. From here on out, it was just a masterclass in shooting. Whether it was greens, whether it was whites, basically every shot was going in. And yeah, that's pretty much how I played a game at 2K. I put up a lot of threes. And the problem is, is that a lot of, when the algo is going against you, it can definitely negatively affect you shooting the threes, especially if you go through spells where you're not greening. But luckily enough, I hit a full white there. And we just went quite a bit ahead. This guy did start to pull back at times, but every time he did, we just go and hit a three and just completely uh, destroyed momentum. We ended up winning that game by 14 points. So that is definitely, definitely a good win right there. And against a decent team and a half decent player. So the next couple of games are weird. So this guy, this Kazas guy, he just quit the game at the very start. And I waited literally five minutes to play my next game. And we come up against him again. And he quits to start the game again. So then we are playing against this guy here. Gilbert Arenas, Katino Mobley, Yanis, and it turns out he was a subscriber. And we start off this game just like we start off many of our games by making three point shots look like layups. I shoot the ball a lot from looking at this. I didn't realize how just how many threes that I shoot until I was looking back on these clips. But my releases were on point so far today. Well, earlier on today. We do a good job there in pick and roll, Carl Anthony Towns. And it got to the stage where we were hitting a lot of twos uh, because they were having to pressure out in the three. And then they started covering the key again and we end up hitting um, threes. So basically this was a subscriber, he was 11 and 0. And to be honest, even though I did manage to get to win by 70 and he was a good player and I do wish I let him win. So this is the last game. Not a great team right here. And as always, I started off the game making three point shots look like layups. And I think that was to my downfall here. Because to start off this game, I am greening everything. Like every shot I'm putting up is green in this first quarter. It is ridiculous. And the problem is, is that if you green too much, it gets to the stage where any non-green won't go in because of the way the 2K algorithm is when they try to mimic real life percentages. And all of a sudden we go on a massive, we have a massive lead. And as you guys can see there, apparently that's 70% contested. That was actually an open label rose and that's less contested. They run down with Larry Keenan who ends up getting, that's apparently 8% covered. And then it got to the stage where we were just slightly off with our releases. And as you guys know, because I was greening so much earlier, any non-greens weren't going in. And they end up going on a massive, massive run to get a lead. But to be honest, I was still somewhat confident in my ability because I do tend to green a lot of shots. Obviously I missed a few there, but the most annoying thing about this game was is that this guy did not green a shot for the entire game. That's a terrible release with a terrible shooter and it goes in. That's T-Mac flying through the air and apparently it's 4% covered. But the thing was, we stayed in this game. Do you wanna know why we stayed in this game? Because my releases were really, really good. I can green a lot of shots. How this guy kept the lead by doing things like this, running at four players, not even going by the players, running at them, but 2K, whatever way the algorithm was in this game made them shots go in. Like a fadeaway three there Westbrook. Thank God that that didn't count, but that just summed it all up. And then look at that. That's a running fall away floater scoop shot with his left hand from T-Mac. Barely a contest apparently over Carl Anthony Downs. And even though, again, like this fourth quarter, I thought we played class. Like every single possession, 
We were forcing them into a mid-range shot or running at three of our players. They weren't greening anything. We were forcing non-shooters to shoot. They couldn't green, but everything went in. Like, look at that. He literally jumped from outs nearly outside the key and managed to get an on one dunk. That's a weird fadeaway hook shot type thing that's contested. They still didn't miss. Literally, we did not get a stop for four minutes in this quarter. I've never been this annoyed playing a game of 2K before because we play brilliant offensively. The one shot they go and miss, they get their own offensive rebound and get the put back. This is the demoralizing thing in 2K. It's like your opponent doesn't green a single shot. Your opponent doesn't take a good, well, like, no, every shot, good shot he took wasn't green. And also, he took a bunch of bad shots. And then, of course, of course, with a minute and 45 to go, he greens his very first shot of the game. The, basically, the dagger. The dagger. So, at this stage in the game, it's do or die. We need a three-point shot, otherwise it's pretty much over. We run a really effective pick and pop right here. We get LaFrance wide open, 90 rating, full white, of course, because we greened everything. It wasn't green, so it's off. At this stage, I just shut off my recording. Um, I played out the rest of the game, didn't rage quit, and I think in the end, he won by something like eight. We actually get some free packs. On a positive note, on a positive note, a little bit optimistic, we got some free packs. So, obviously for going 11 and one yesterday, I got a spotlight Kevin Garnett reward. Hope, fingers crossed, I can get a Kobe. A Kobe would fit into this team perfectly. And we got a gold, really. I thought they were guaranteed cards. Oh my God, we got a Fred Van Vliet. That's terrible. Then we got a lights out pack. So, fingers crossed again. We got something decent from a pack. Steve Kerr, maybe he was worth a little bit of MT. There we go, we got Steve Kerr. That is a decent amount of MT. I will never use that Steve Kerr, but I wanna just check what MT he is going for. Steve Kerr, color, or just any Steve Kerr. 2,750, he's that cheap now. And he was like 9K at one stage. 5,000, yeah, he's crap, he's terrible. Like, he's absolutely terrible. So, 3,900, he's that cheap. Man, he goes into range extender diamond. Man, he is so cheap, oh my god. I know why he's so cheap. They gave out this pack today. They gave out the lights out pack today. No wonder all these cards are cheap. Okay, so 3,000. Maybe there's actually some decent lights out players for cheap. Let's see what Gilbert Arenas is. Okay, so position, point guard, theme, lights out, color, amethyst. Sorry if you can hear fireworks going off in the background. It is Halloween, unfortunately. So, 39k. He's 100% worth 39k. I just don't know whether I want to spend that amount of money right now. Um, am I getting for like 30k, I might? I don't think he'll be up for that price, but... That's the price I'm already willing to pay for him. Okay, so 37. Ugh, do I do I bite the bullet? I don't know what they're gonna come out with tomorrow, but surely a point guard better than Gilbert Arenas. Those guys don't come along too often in the year. But I think at you know, some stage we're gonna get a diamond Gilbert Arenas and it'll be dumb to spend 40k on him now. So yeah, I'm gonna leave that and then go to premium. Lights out. Let's send Steve Curry to my auctions. And let's sell him for it at 3K. I can't believe it. If I got him like a week ago, or not a week ago, when he came out, he was like 8, 9K. But, uh, sure, look, it is what it is. Uh, 2,950, it's better than nothing, I guess. And it's we're just logging in. So anyway, now we are going to just play a game of my team now and let's hopefully just stay calm just play the game and i don't need to worry i just out of frustration i just reset my record instead of even getting the reward i was just that annoyed but oh, look i'm a little bit more calm now so let's just play again hopefully have a little bit of fun okay so we are playing against why couldn't i have come up against a team like this and actually no to be fair i did i did actually come up against a team like this as i would have mentioned earlier that very first team where I like just about scraped the win, but okay, you can tell from that one play, the fact he, the guy didn't even get a shot off, so we should be okay. It's a terrible release. 
I think I'm just carrying over my bad play from... Actually, no, I, I can't even say that it was a bad play in that game at 9-0. It was like... It was literally just a case of... Uh, the other guy not being able to... Physically being able to miss. I played a good second half there and just blew it. But that's just the way 2K is sometimes. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I've had... I, I'm not gonna say I've had as many or more. But I've had plenty of games where my opponent just can't hit a shot and I hit everything. And then it's just frustrating when, it hap when things like that happen where you feel like there's nothing you can do. And then like there's other games where you can do no wrong where you're shooting white after white after white and they're all going in. It's just, I hate the way the game's so luck based. I wish that if you did the same thing 10 times in a row, the outcome would be the same. And I know obviously um, in basketball, some people have bad games, so in terms of, as I always say, in terms of like basketball simulation, the way the game's played out is actually good. But in terms of like a fully functional video game, I don't want to have to pray to the 2K gods for every game. I don't want to have to worry that 2K may completely screw you with the algorithm every single game. I'd rather know that if I lose, I lose because my opponent's better. And if I win, I win because I'm better. Or my opponent has a better team or something like that. Like, I don't even mind the game being paid to win. I don't even mind, like if someone beats me, they just have a better team. I'm like, okay, fair enough, their team's better. I'm not gonna be annoyed about that. But when someone beats me, it doesn't matter what team they have, when it just feels like you cannot do anything right and they can't miss, they're, they're the games that are really frustrating. Bye bye. There we go, good shot there by Swaggy P. No steady shooter badge. Like obviously that 4% contested shot isn't gonna go in that often if he doesn't green it because he can't shoot contested that well, but like, he's the best open shooter in the game because he's got a high three point rating, a good release, and not, the steady shooter badge doesn't exist. So the 5%, I think, drop in open shots just isn't there. That is just the single worst defensive play I've ever played. Again, this is just like yesterday, like everything is just so off. Like actually m me playing basketball in real life, I'm playing the worst I've played in my entire life. I'm playing 2K like this was day one, week one, when I was struggling to play the game. I don't know what's been wrong with me the last few days, but like, it's in everything. Everything's been off. So, fingers crossed that I can get over whatever this, this sort of life slump is going on at the minute. Let's go, snatch back. Hit the three, green. Kobe White's snatch back jumper is so nice. He's got nine points here in the first quarter. This card is unreal. I have to admit, this card is unreal. Let's open. Green, there we go. Come on. Couple of stops, couple of scores, and we can pull away in this game. They're not getting a shot off here. Stop. Three. Nick Anderson, it's a really tough shot right there. He's the best shooter in the game, without question. Gilbert Arenas is good. Katina Mobley's good. Um, Kevin Durant's good. The best shooter in the game by a country mile is Nick Anderson. He does not miss for me. That's open. And that's green from the best shooter in the game, Nick Anderson. 11 point lead, and that is a rage quit. Why couldn't we have gotten these type of things happening earlier? There was no ra Actually, no, to be fair, I got two rage quits, so. And there's just, that was a little bit of a better game, so. I know, at least, at least I'm ending the month on a somewhat positive note, I guess. But uh, yeah, so I wonder who is going to be the next spotlight reward. So obviously, if you guys look at the pack market, the spotlight Dirk Nowitzki is finished in 19 hours. So I wonder who the next one's gonna be. So leave in the comments who you guys think that is going to be. I'm trying to think what my prediction is. Okay, we've got enough Julius Irving cards. Is it crazy just to just look at these? Um, it won't be Amare. I'm trying to think who the other ones are. The other ones are Clyde, we already have it. We already have Dirk Nowitzki. And I think one of the other player in the months are like Baron Davis, so I don't think he'll get it. I'm trying to think who even had like a relevant enough career to get a Spotlight series. Could we see a Spotlight Tim Duncan maybe? I don't think we're gonna go back into the 80s or 90s. We might see a spotlight Larry Bird. I wouldn't put it past them to do that. Maybe a little bit early in the year for that. Spotlight Magic Johnson.
could def we could definitely see that. No, we actually we definitely can't see that because the reward for it all is a Magic Johnson. So I think Bird might be my prediction. In a weird one, I think Spotlight Larry Bird might actually but might be a good shout. Larry Bird or Dominique? No, nah, Dominique didn't do enough in the playoffs. Um, it's hard to guess. There's no Charles Barkley, there's no Reggie Miller. Patrick Ewing, maybe? You just, oh, I just have no idea. For all the like semi-current players, Tim Duncan is probably the most likely one, but I wouldn't put it past, I wouldn't be that surprised if there's a Larry Bird. But anyway, that's the video, thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.